Hello, hi, uh, good afternoon all. So today uh, we have the final presentation from the presentation series of the 52 Paritya Fellowship, cohort three, where our fellows have been sharing their learnings, reflections, and insights from the journey, the fellowship journey that they undertook. Hi, my name is Ashik Krishnan, and I'm one of the co-creators of Travelers University. Uh, the 52 Parinde Fellowship is a program for youth who are interested in the pursuit of livelihoods, livelihoods oriented towards social, ecological, and personal well-being. And part of the fellowship, like our fellows have been pursuing or exploring the different domain areas of their interests, uh, the kind of issues or topics that uh, they wish to engage with in long term, the kind of livelihood areas uh, that they see for themselves in the long term. And they have been meeting with uh, several allied practitioners or parindes as we call them, uh, people who have been working in those respective domains, spending seven to 10 days uh, with them, each with each of them, observing their work, involving their work, engaging in their work, thus having a direct learning experience for themselves. And in the final presentation today, we have Sreshta. Sreshta is from Jaipur, Rajasthan, and Sreshta had explored the area of, uh, or the domain of like coordinators in education, art, and social emotional learning. Sreshta is a social worker and an aspiring educator. She has engaged with issues of child rights and child protection education, gender and sexuality, mental health and psychosocial well-being through various social impact projects and working with non-profit organizations. Her journey of social work education and working with people on ground has enriched her learning and shaped her worldviews and personal life. As a young professional and a curious child, she is now exploring her inclination towards rural and indigenous ways of life and its integration and interconnectedness with the rest of nature. And in the journey of 52 Parinde Fellowship, Sreshta explored the domain of alternative education and social emotional learning through art-based pedagogy. She got the opportunity to understand different models of learning, community-led initiatives for social change, and learn from various allied practitioners under these themes. The fellowship also took her through an inner journey where she examined her relationship with power, social hierarchies, understood her fears and insecurities, and learned about her communication patterns. She looks forward to reimagine expression and communication beyond written or spoken language, mainly through art practice. Here is a look at uh, the map of Sreshta's journey. And yes, over to you, Srishta. Thank you, Ashik. Uh, and thank you, everyone, um, everyone who's present for this presentation, present for this presentation in the room and online. Uh, I would like to begin with a gratitude note. Um, so yeah, while I was preparing the presentation, um, that is the first thing that I could think of, that my learning journey or whatever I have gained in this journey has, it, it, there, is, there is a contribution from so many people. So I would like to thank all my parindes who welcomed me in multiple ways. They opened not only their homes, but also their hearts for me. So it's, it's not just uh, showing your life more vulnerably to me, but it was also uh, uh, their personal relationships, their workplace, uh, team members. So uh, I found or I was welcomed in so many spaces, which people, for, for people, they, those are the sacred spaces. Uh, so I have a lot of gratitude for all those people and certain other people also who were not my parindes in the journey, but they, they opened their homes for me and... Uh, fed me good food and held me with so much love and affection. 
so this is just like a small uh, in in my head this is the visual of all the little homes i was uh, there in throughout this journey so thank you everyone we can move on to the next slide yeah so uh, how i began with fellowship uh, or the idea of a livelihoods um, i i uh, the the time when this fellowship came up was uh, a period when I was taking a break from work. And at the same time, I was struggling with a sense of burnout. Um, and yet, uh, in my work, I felt that I need to add to my learning. Like, my knowledge and learning was not enough to address the challenges that I was facing. So, um, I did consider going for uh, further education or looking at some courses and programs, but somehow that did not sit well with me. I wanted to learn, but I did not know how. I wanted to work, but I was exploring what are the other ways I can work other than the roles that I had done previously. So that was a time when um, I saw uh, the 52 Parende Fellowship Program, the, the application, and it was like uh, instantly I could see the connection in the words like I saw a livelihood first and it it, it made sense to me and uh, there were shared values uh, they they are rooted in values or talking about things uh, or questions that I was sitting with so um, that is how this journey began with the fellowship um, and yes uh, I I have traveled to so many places so the idea of learning to traveling was definitely there with me. So I did decided to go for the fellowship. Um, how did I choose the domain? Is uh, It's coming from my professional uh, experiences, interest areas, but also so much from my personal life. So education, uh, yes, I, I wanted to see what, my fundamental question was like, how, how does learning takes place when nobody's trying Time to teach. So what are the most organic ways in which learning can happen for children, but as well as for adults? Um, so that is the reason I was looking into alternative education, uh, but also uh, specifically into models where uh, which are not embedded in or similar to this the, the mainstream formal school education system, but something which is uh, different from that. And uh, uh, art is something, uh, and within art also, uh, dance and theater, these are two art forms, performing art forms that I feel really connected with. However, I haven't explored it that much in my life. And uh, this was the time when I felt that I should look more into art and then how these art forms can be applied to spaces of my work, like my work has been with communities that have been often relegated to the margins when it comes to opportunities, access to opportunities. So um, looking at social issues of social justice, uh, but also as my work was with uh, children and adolescents and youth, uh, looking at social emotional learning. So these were like multiple themes through which uh, my interests uh, run through. And uh, therefore I chose this intersection. Um, so I, I will be speaking about, um, key insights from the journey, but I have to share that, uh, there is, there is depth within these, uh, learnings also, all of which I might not be sharing in this amount of time. So there is more, but I'm, uh, speaking about the major areas of my learning or understanding of the domain. So I, uh, got to the opportunity to see and learn about different models, practices, and uh, pedagogies about alternatives like unschooling, uh, the theory of constructivism, and how it is applied in practice, and the idea of uh, free play. Um, and uh, one really important and uh, amazing thing for me was uh, knowing the significance of play or playfulness in learning and this is applicable to uh, any kind of learning and any at any age uh, or even in life like 
how playfulness can be can be a part of living learning and everything else that we do yeah so um another thing uh, i saw was that education is not working with the child education also involves actively working with the parents and the family ecosystem because it is often seen that children do carry influences good and bad um and emotions and uh, other things from the family so whatever happens in their uh, environment at home very much affects uh, how they engage with learning in in learning spaces whether it is school or elsewhere so uh, the importance of having that uh, working together with uh, parents teachers and students like a uh, like a co creation of learning is important and uh, also when you're looking at uh, in terms of academics or learning it is also important to have uh, the trust or rapport with the learner to to let them be fully a part of the process then um, this was a very uh, I, I would say like a very uh, interesting intersection for me because there is art and there is uh, engagement with the community, but uh, simultaneously it is touching at several topics. So engaging with different age groups. So there are um, children and there are teenagers, but also a community, some community members who are family members of these children. There is a community youth who is uh, leading the program. So all the processes, uh, how theater or uh, theater-based processes can be used to create safe spaces and dialogue with people. Uh, and um, at the same time, uh, build your own narrative uh, and, and a knowledge system as well. So when you prepare a performance, you get a, a chance to share your own story. So theater, how theater can be a powerful tool in that. And uh, then uh, what would be the, the culture and values of a community, of, a, uh, of an initiative which is entirely led by the community uh, where people live and yeah, led by the uh, people from the community itself. So uh, dance, I explored dance as well as part of my journey um this was a lot uh, uh, learning was a lot about myself that i learned through dance is um, the body memory and how it holds emotions so uh, i remember the uh, there was this festival partner dance festival and the first day i was all ready but then um, the moment I like five minutes to when the session was to start and I step on the floor and I suddenly feel this uh, panic, fear and all and I'm feeling and I don't understand why I'm feeling this fear. And um, throughout that day and throughout the workshop, then I kind of sat with myself and then I understood or or rather I would say it kind of came to the surface what all things I was of and uh, why uh, I was reluctant to dance or move my body in certain ways and what did it speak about uh, my relationship with trust and connection and expression, expression of my authentic self. So, um, and this, this just happened uh, in an instant where I haven't planned, but in a moment of of epiphany where my body brought it all, it threw it all out, and I could I could sense all of those unpleasant emotions that I had been holding, but did not know how to process those. So that was more internal, and uh, then I could also uh, see just uh, similar to theater, there are dance practices and especially when you're uh, there's partner dance where you are supposed to team up with other people uh, 
they these exercises are so useful to be applied uh, to learn social emotional skills uh, because there is expression there is communication but when you are dancing with other people there is there are multiple bodies moving together so there is trust and there is teamwork and there is vulnerability Then um, when we are creating uh, theater performances for children for uh, uh, as an audience, so children to, to see children as uh, cultural citizens who have the right to uh, art and culture so that they can develop their sensibilities and uh, learn about different, different kinds of, um, uh, yes, modes of expression. Or storytelling so i could learn uh, what goes into a performance so how how should be the visual design uh, exposure to language the language that children speak in yes but also other uh, maybe other language from other cultures uh, and non verbal uh, cues as well and uh, what can uh, what is an interactive performance uh, with children how do you keep them engaged and how do you uh, bring uh, storytelling from different forms of literature and again from, from different cultures because that also opens up a window for the children to look, at, look into lives of other uh, people or other communities that they may not be directly exposed to. And uh, this is not related to art, but I had the opportunity of meeting uh, people who were really... Uh, remarkable in how they were managing programs so uh, i have often experienced that um uh, when when we talk about little things like not using plastic or uh, conscious use of water or certain other things when when there are more people you can do it for yourself but when there are 10 15 people these things uh, we are not able to maintain so uh, running programs in ecological conscious manner so how we are when we are creating banners we are not printing uh, uh, this flex banners and uh, can we paint it or use cloth banners that can be washed and um, uh, when you are going to places we, uh, we are carrying up plates and spoons and um, even like our dishwasher and uh, hand wash so that wherever we are going we are not using um, uh, what uh, disposable plates and and also planning in that manner so all planning for food what are we going to need and how much so we can prepare the food instead of like suddenly when we need now we need to buy snacks which which all comes in packaged like plastic packaging so these are very um hands-on things that i could see and learn that what all it takes, like uh, there were literal Excel sheets on what all is needed and at what interval. And that kind of planning makes it possible to, to be more ecological conscious in, in uh, running your programs. Yeah. Um, then when working with children, it can be applied to uh, of course any age group, but important processes of social uh, emotional learning so there was this dialogue process which uh, where uh, important conversations they can be difficult conversations but they can be appreciation also can be brought up and a dialogue can take place which in which a lot of reflections also happen check-in sessions to yes check on feelings and emotions so before you start the day how that happens community work um this idea is not a uh, new but uh, but the way i saw its application it really um, was an amazing experience for me because when children or not not children when everybody in the community so it can be people from different age groups but different abilities as well when they participate uh, together in 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 all the work that needs to be done to live in a community so it, it can be cleaning it can be watering the plants it can be um yeah taking the dogs on a walk or feeding the pets everything is shared and everybody does little bit of work to their own capacity but the idea is to participate so uh, i feel uh, i personally felt like other than any of the any of the um, processes that that rely on communication 
through words this is a way through which social emotional learning can be cultivated and uh, in uh, learning balance and exposure to different activities i'll explain what i meant when i say he uh, hand head and heart so um, uh, often like i have seen in the mainstream education that uh, the academic part is given too much importance because it is also related to certain skills uh, which will give you a job and will get you money but for the holistic development and for the health of an individual uh, we we do need to uh, keep all our senses or all our faculties engaged so we do a lot of work with the head uh, thinking and uh, i i think all all uh, critical thinking and uh, strategizing and planning everything related with the head but uh, at least in my life there is very little work where i'm engaging with my hands so a balancing exposure that there there needs to be an equal exposure between working with your head but also working with your hands so uh, i saw this uh, uh, very very nice and creative uh, idea of coconut craft so using coconut shell to create different different any, anything that you like and make so case or a pen stand or even a ship or a uh, 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 what's that merry go round so um, it is it is creative but it requires one to use their hands and work and build their bodies as well or gardening something like gardening and physical activities uh, learning martial arts all of that and uh, when i say heart i i mean more something like music or uh, yeah theater so something that where where you get the chance for emotional expression or engaging with more complex and abstract uh, things in experiences in life yes. so um i i i feel like i saw a lot that there is so much to um, take away and i can say that this is not uh, an exhaustive list of insights there is much more um but i also felt sometimes uh, there were some challenges for me or i i am trying to place how everything that i see or saw will can be applied in the context of my work so uh, for instance um, when i'm looking at dance uh, or, or how can dance be applied for therapeutic interventions but also in general in community engagement uh i there may be but i could not find any existing model for that for like a, like a full fledged model there are interventions dance based interventions like a dance movement therapy but in in the the way i was looking for it it wasn't there so um i am keen on working with people or have worked in in the past uh with communities uh with low resources so uh funding or resource mobilization is an area which i am uh, thinking about or i'm yes i'm looking to to kind of uh, address this challenge that how can i bring um, or everything that i saw but and apply it in a low resource setting um so this is how was my learning experience it was immersive uh, definitely some of the things which i can share is i could learn about uh, my patterns of communication so i i i realized that it was it uh, is i take time to um, settle in in a new environment environment is is physical environment but also with people uh, and uh, because i was constantly moving to new places i was finding it very difficult at times to communicate my needs not not because of um, there was any kind of hostility in the environment simply because my own inability or lot of fears related to what will happen if i said this uh, or if i asked for this so um, yeah difficulty in communication uh, regarding that or uh, in transforming conflicts 
so these are some of the things which became very clear to me uh, i would i would say that um, learning through through this mode is is something like uh, some kind of churning or boiling of uh, a liquid which would be polluted so you you can see that it's muddy or dirty but when it's boiled all the impurities will come to the fore so i was also like aware of some things here and there that this is not working this that, that is not okay or uh, i need to work on this but i think this experience has completely shaken things up so everything has come to the fore and become very clear to me so uh, i think that has been my uh, like very very precious or valuable to me to to be able to experience things in a manner where i can understand them with such clarity um i could also learn about my learning pattern so my question going back to my question i was uh, what enables learning i think this is it for me to really embody and uh, an experience helps me learn things better uh, i could know things in theory but it will really reach its true understanding when i experience it and a uh, participative methods certainly reflective learning so the process where we have to write daily reflections that really also uh, help to kind of put down the chaos of thoughts that you have in your head and then able to see where it is coming from or uh, how it can be taken ahead um and cultural immersion yes uh, that's that's definitely uh, a part of traveling across so culture is not only i feel it's not in terms of uh, different regions but family to family person to person also culture uh, varied so for for instance there were some spaces or some uh, uh, communities where it was more uh, the energy was more quiet and meditative um uh, and then there were spaces where the energy was high so there would be lot of a uh, lot of uh, banter and fun and singing and dancing so it it was it was like moving between diverse experiences people and communities and um, yes i think that was good for me to just adapt to wherever uh, i go and that 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 is something i feel i have gained from this that i feel more confident now that i can go anywhere and adapt maybe not anywhere but better definitely better than what it was before the journey so um i i am yet to process fully the the learnings like i said it 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 was an immersive experience and sometimes St things still come to me i remember uh, some event or some incident and it comes to me so uh, as of now i feel um, i want to in build build art practices uh, as in first i want to immerse myself in that so far i have been thinking of art as a tool or uh, an applied medium but i want to do it so i do want to uh, invest into da into dancing and theater as the art forms um myself first and uh, then learning art based facilitation yes as a next step once i experience it myself and when i feel that now i'm ready to also look into facilitation uh, work on learning that and it's it's not separate actually but that i intend to do while working with existing initiatives maybe with some of my parindes if it, if things work out in that manner and probably then grow as uh, an individual a livelihood practitioner so can we yeah but i wanted to share a few things can we go back to the learning experience yes so um yeah i i wanted to share a few uh, anecdotes of how learning sometimes have come to me in just a moment i shared uh, about dance earlier that i stepped on the dance floor and then it was suddenly all blank and chaos um so similarly uh, i 
went through there is this uh, method called uh, theater of the oppressed it's it's a theater technique only and i was going through a workshop and i was going through an exercise which was physically very uh, straining and i was in so much pain and like intensely into feeling oh my god my hands are hurting so much what do i do and suddenly i realized that i could simply put it in a position which is comfortable and nobody there was actually no instruction uh, prohibiting that and that uh, uh, again in a moment of epiphany became like a, a metaphor for my life that i tend to do that i tend to con get consumed in situations and i feel like there is no way out of it but if i could just step back and see the whole scenario i do have little power to whatever extent in those situations so finding that power and also engaging with those um internal or external conflicts so uh, this is something which came from that exercise and uh, of course i could have studied or read about it 100 times but uh, nothing would stay as strongly as this did um and uh, another uh, experience um, with my parinde so uh, i had the opportunity to uh, spend new year's eve at my parinde's place and uh, the community was really kind to uh, to to include me in that and um, the new year reflections were started where people were sharing about looking back at the year um I, at that time i was not in a good state of mind and that's why i was thinking that you know nothing is happening i'm doing nothing and uh i don't know where i'm headed and all of that and when i started reflecting on the year and listing out the things i actually realized that it was not true so um uh, it was that moment of reflection that jolted me and like to look up and look it uh to connect with the reality more uh in in a yeah to to kind of get out of my head and really see facts of what has happened actually and uh, there are several anecdotes of uh i would say pearls of wisdom shared by parindes where they would have just said one sentence and uh i i think chitra is here so i can share about when she said to me that i i was overwhelmed seeing her challenges in life and i asked her um how how do you do it and she said because i i enjoy living and that was such a simple thing and she added saying that i'm getting so much i'm not only giving but i'm receiving so much and then that was a moment for me to really think that yes so am i am i really uh, keeping account of what i'm receiving as well if if i would really sit down to look into okay i'm doing this much and i'm struggling or having challenges but if i could also see what all i'm receiving uh maybe it will be it it will not be how i uh, how i felt trapped in the challenges so doing that daily practice of of sitting down and reminding myself if, if i forget it's okay to remind myself okay what what all am i receiving or the support system that i have the people or the uh, resources that i have it it is such a simple thing yet it came in that very uh, normal casual moment so some some of these there are many uh, incidents like that i think i'll stop here and once again thank you thank you everyone yes so uh, thank you shrestha for that like very insightful presentation and now we can open for q and a uh so this meeting is being done in hybrid so there are like uh, we are in the campus of bhumi college bangla and there are our team members and co-fellows and uh, friends at bhumi who are in the room with shrestha and also like more other friends who are joined via zoom 
Uh, so those of you who have joined by Zoom, you can uh, either unmute yourselves and like share or ask, or you can also put your comments or questions in the chat box. Yeah. Um, this is Chitra. Yeah, Hi. thank you, Sita, for sending the link. Uh, yeah, I should say it was a very, very reflective presentation. And all I could think of as you started talking and moving from slide to slide was uh, how difficult it would have been instead of talking about this happened here, that happened there instead of talking about observations, making it one's own learning and present it in a reflective way must take quite a bit of uh, mental hard work, I would say. Uh, that was, thanks for sharing. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, and I am also intrigued by uh, theater and yeah, dance. Yeah, I would also wait to read uh, your writing with respect to that. Yeah, I would wait for that. <laughs> yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Any questions, thoughts, comments? All are welcome now. Right now, I just want to be very important. Like, you're just ending. I mean, there's one. Um, and then what is what? Uh, yeah, step So there's a question from the room that uh, before the fellowship, I was taking a break from work and now the fellowship is ending. So what do I have on my mind? So what I'm the immediate next step, yeah. got that right. Um, so to be very honest, I have more questions now than I had before the journey. So uh, it, in all honesty, yes. Uh, I would say I'm more lost because earlier I thought that there is this one question and I'll just go and see it and yeah, then that's it. But uh, I have like kind of dipped into the sea and now I need to engage with everything that has opened up. So um, as a concrete thing, I do not know, but I'm also looking forward in, in the next month, like before the fellowship ends also with the help of 
people at TU, the mentors, also arrive at those immediate next steps. I did think of uh, either um, going for an expressive arts therapy course um, or, like I said, that with some of the parendes, if I could engage for a while, like be there and learn, but for a longer period. But uh, yes, I have to say that I have not really zeroed on something that this is definitely what I'm doing. And I have to admit it more to myself that yes, I I am confused. Confused not uh, in a way that I don't understand, but there is so much to engage with and put together that one thing just uh, is not coming up. So that, that thing is there that I want to do this also and this also and this also, that also, how can I do everything? And do I need to do everything right away? So that is there. Oh, uh, there's a question from the room in the comments. Thank you for taking this wonderful journey. I would like to know how theater can help people in everyday life. Theater can help people in everyday life. Um. Uh, I feel one like yes, performance can is is a is a medium of storytelling. Uh, I don't know how, if people would like to do, but uh, again, in this journey, some I, somebody's words are coming to my uh, mind. Uh, somebody who told me that everybody has a story to tell. It may not be, it may be boring, not engaging, whatever, but everyone tells stories. So one storytelling is one thing, but I feel that in simple exercises also, like, uh, in, in theater exercises, there is a lot to do with observation and awareness of observing simple things in your environment, uh, being detailed oriented. And then again, this, because it is done with a group of people, it deals a lot with how we engage with others. And uh, when there's also a lot of reflective exercises or uh, things like, where you have to, if if even if you go for like acting in theater workshop kind of theater and not looking at something like a theater of the oppressed, you when you have to think of a character, you have to look at different aspects of your life. So I think it can add that depth of thinking in and and that richness in our daily life, where we start looking beyond the surface, where we start becoming more observant. Uh, again, if you bring that intentionality, that can really help in in that. And uh, yes, where I say that it can be used to create safe spaces. So once uh, we learn that vulnerability is okay, it is it is okay to be vulnerable and share difficult uh, thoughts and emotions. Then probably we will be able to bring it to our lives as well in our like daily relationships or daily. Uh, interactions. Hi, Shrestha. Pallavi this side. Uh, so happy to see you here and so uh, proud to hear your uh, about your journey. Uh, I'm ju I just wanted to ask that uh, what has been the most interesting part of your journey and um, if you want to concise then how it has helped you as a person uh, in terms of like personally so thank you Pallavi. thank you for being here and asking that question mm. most interesting i i wouldn't be able to say one thing as most interesting because the the few anecdotes that I share, I have such anecdotes from each each parinde or like for for each week or something like that. Um, but I would say uh, 
it's finding a community uh i, I had not i had not thought that people would be so open and this is beyond the the parendes would be so open to embrace an outsider or a stranger uh but i found a lot of that like that that giving without really asking or expecting uh that not not thinking in transactional terms so all the the, the love support and not not in like words but very functional ways like i i need a place to stay and somebody says okay come or i i say that i need to learn this and i'm exploring that they they are invested in my journey uh because to some parindas i did ask if like and they said that somebody told me that i wanted to learn this way and if there is somebody out there who's doing this i want to support them so that is my personal take away that there there is a community it may not be a fixed uh Uh, unchanging set or group as we may think of but i can create one or i can find one or i can become a part of one if i just show up with authenticity so that is that is one part and uh, and yeah related to that also finding many homes so from my definition of home has now it's kind of breaking down and flowing and i'm rethinking what home means uh, i started finding homes in little moments also not just a physical place or people yeah that's one more question yeah the theater of the oppressed so theater of the oppressed uh, that was introduced by uh, augusto boal uh, and he took this idea or was inspired to take this idea from uh, uh, paulo freire who had given who had written about uh, pedagogy of the oppressed Uh, so a little bit about pedagogy of the oppressed paulo freire says that um, when we in in society when we talks about uh, when we talk about the we see that somebody is oppressed and someone is the oppressor he says that uh, the role is not fixed and uh, it is possible and it is likely that the oppressor also has somebody above or who's oppressing them so those those roles or those identities shift and uh, a major part is to the to address oppression it is not necessarily that it should stop from above or an action needs to be taken by the uh, oppressor to stop the oppression but the oppressed can also take that power or take that action into their hands and uh, yeah like Uh, change the system of dehumanization so based on that only the theater of oppressed was uh, developed and yeah through the techniques and all it i would say evaluate or examines these power relationships uh, performative practices uh, do you do you think i mean am i honest let yeah, me but do you think that performative practices also help you in understanding others fellow beings if so curious to know also what other form of art helps you understand others i 
I think performative practices, uh, it can, like, and others, I think it starts from, like, even if you're performing alone or if you're trying to do something by yourself, like you say, I don't want to perform for somebody else, it is an internal engagement. And yes, when we are telling a story or expressing or communicating, we are uh, having an engagement. It is, it is just the nature of that engagement which is embodied which i feel helps in uh, building that connection or going beyond the surface level understanding uh, what other forms of art help you understand others mm. i have explored like because of my own interest these only uh, Maybe visual arts can, but I have to admit that I have very less understanding of that, like of the depth of that. So uh, when you're doing in, in one of my fellows uh, uh, sharings only, I realized that a painter was painting the walls, an artist was painting the walls of the city and they drew something on it. So that can also be a medium of storytelling. This is what comes to my mind, but... Uh, Beyond that, I've not explored so much to be able to uh, share in depth. And when I say dance for this, it is, it is like movement practice of different kinds, which I may not know of right now, but I am aware that there are different kinds of movement practices. Yeah, so I'll just share the yeah. question here. So, question from the room that social emotional learning is is a is is getting popular and it is being introduced in international schools and many other settings but uh, for somebody who doesn't have that kind of access to uh, to to that training if i'm understanding it correctly a teacher how can they uh, as as a beginner how can they introduce that in their classroom and you are doing it using story and poetry yeah. uh yes I, I do agree with you that the term is used and then uh, there can be indicators to measure it, but it is also something which you cannot measure something simply like uh, um, academic scores and grades. Um, but I feel like one thing I learned from one of my parendes who were who simply started teaching uh, because they were so, I don't know, as a person, they were so so connected with children. So the, the, in, during the lockdown, um, uh, kids in their society used to, like in the apartment, wanted to come and uh, just wanted them to help with their studies. And with no uh, training in pedagogy as such, have taught people before, but not any kind of training, they started doing this. 
and what i see with in that parinde is even if they are like 30 children they really are looking at each child and they're talking to the last child so one thing i feel uh, what if if you as a person or individual is really invested in the learner that also reflects some sometimes it's simple modeling um sometime it's uh simple techniques like even if you're not qualified in counseling or anything there is simple uh, i would not call it techniques but practices of listening and that also comes with doing so uh, resource wise i would say that there can be like small online courses or workshop that one can sign up for to because as a teacher we do need to keep uh what do you say upgrading our uh, competencies or whatever so if you get stuck somewhere and if you don't know what to do you can uh, look for resources uh, other thing is also the network or it, this is this has been one of my major learnings in this journey that the alternative education is not just one thing it is a network of learning communities so they rely a lot on each other for for uh, new things or something that they're stuck with. So that I think as a teacher, that can be a resource that you have some, and these are all in low resource settings only. They're not in international schools, but I agree that we need to know about it because before this, even I did not know. So that that can be a part if you're like, especially if you're here at Bhumi, if you know some people just asking those questions would be good. Uh, other than that, uh, there are like mm, exercises that can facilitate social emotional learning, but those also need to be facilitated. So uh, if you get to visit some places for a day and also I can speak about places that I've gone like Palm Hill, it's, it's close to Bangalore and it is a learning community. They're open to people who want to come and join. So if you want to go and see it for a day or something like that, will be good what i mean to say is exercise you can find it on the internet or from a book but its facilitation will still require little bit of uh, one's own work and preparation which can be developed so there are uh, theater based exercises or there are exercises under social emotional learning itself or oh, outdoor exercises that you take the children out to a different community than where they come from so that gives them a chance to see other people and like appreciate their lives. And that outdoor visit can have a small reflection exercise afterwards. And then we can sit and talk about it. So this is just an example of how we can do within what we know. But the best way is to rely on the network of other educators. I hope that answers. There's a question from the room in the comments. Did you find any inspiration for moment during your train journeys because it's such a closed space? Okay. Yeah. I think train is dance itself because it's moving. So it's embodied. Uh, and when you sit in the train for two days, you are still moving when you uh, when you go out. Yeah, I I think that much inspiration is okay for now. Yeah, I think we can take one or two more questions and those, I guess. Okay. You've asked a difficult question because the thing is, I may have forgotten, forgotten some names and uski I will not be able to acknowledge everybody in every place who has fed me like really good food. But um, I think a lot of uh, dessert I got to have, I think at Farm Hill alone, uh, they really like I don't know what's the positive way of a positive overwhelming with good food so there was cheesecake and rum cake and plum cake maybe 
<laughs> banana bread and cinnamon rolls and uh i think i also tried this new thing it's it i, I think okay yeah, i'm so sorry chitra if i uh, understood it wrong was it banana stem or something it was uska uh, vegetable that was there and uh, yeah yeah banana stem we make regularly yeah yeah Oh my God! I've eaten so much of Palm Hill. When I think of Palm Hill, I first think of food only. <laughs> you are not the first one. Don't worry. <laughs> and and I have to mention. So they had like lot of trees, and there were mulberry trees. So every time I'm passing by, I'm picking mulberries and eating. Vaise. So that is just like I ate by myself. Uh. I think at uh Nikita and Harshad. Like I don't remember the. the names because those were like auntie was cooking there and i was just eating but it was very tasty food like i have not eaten simple food like which is simple and nutritious but is but also is very tasty so i think naam bhul gaye main but we have simple vegetarian food pata nahi kya kya tha what else that's it <laughs> yeah so ek <clears> ek last <throat> time if i would my last is a and what um jab what is movement for you so jab jab aap movement sikhte ho you know like you do dance and uh, theater and uh, from what i understand you do और तो जब आप सोच रहे हैं कम्स टू योर माइंड इज की हाउ डू यू 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 व्हाट्स कमिंग अप फॉर मी इज एक्सप्रेशन रेगुलेशन कम्युनिकेशन और एक्सचेंज कैन ऑल्सो रिपीट द क्वेश्चन फॉर द Rest of the people who are joining. Yeah, it's in the what is movement for you? That is, Ashwini so, has typed it in the chat box. So, I feel like if I give an example, when when I'm free, um, I'll be like really like when I'm walking, I'm sitting. I'll be very free in the ways my limbs will be somewhere, or I'm like humming or gently moving and all. mostly if i'm sitting just like this i am trying to hold in a lot of uh yeah lot of lot of things which difficult things but can yeah it can be it 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 is for me a direct uh symbolism of not being able to express the inability to express or not being allowed to express so um i've also seen like uh, in many places in schools children are asked to move like this whereas children are actually best knowledge bearers of of how to use their body for regulation for self regulation emotional regulation or otherwise like if a child is upset they will go on the ground and start like flapping and crying and after that thing they will they will settle so to do this also is like just uh, what do you what do you call it like closing or capturing energy and not allowing it to flow so that also just came out flow of energy and that answered your question i think uh, we can close with that uh, i mean the conversations in the room can definitely continue um but apart from that we can close with that i guess and so th- once again thanks trishta for the presentation and thanks to all the people who joined via zoom and like at bhumi thanks a lot once again um and you can also check out the earlier presentations on our on the youtube channel of travelers university uh, you will also find like other education content over there uh inviting you to check them out at once thank you bye